Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm going to be talking about the reasons for replacing a fuse board that contains rewirable fuses to BS3036 and what codes that I would use on an EICR. So there are a few things to bear in mind when we find these old uh, Wilex uh, consumer units with BS3036 fuses. First thing to bear in mind is that the BS3036 fuses are still in the wiring regulations. You'll, you'll find that there still are maximum ZS values in table 41.3. So the problem with these consumer units is that first of all, no RCD protection and very difficult to add RCD protection when you've got these old rewirable fuses in place. There are a few reasons why RCD protection is required. So first of all, um, for circuits that are supplying socket outlets, um, for circuits that supply portal equipment outside, for circuits that supply luminaires, for circuits that supply um, circuits in special locations or even if they just pass through the special location, and also for cables buried in a wall at a depth of less than 50 millimeters, unless they have an earth metallic covering. Now an earth metallic covering is um, a metal conduit or um, the sheet, potentially the sheath of a cable as well. So there's a few things to bear in mind there in relation to RCD protection. So what I would say is I would look at the consumer unit to see what these circuits are doing and I can see that there are some socket circuits on there. So I would be looking to see if those socket circuits are supplying equipment outside. If they're supplying equipment outside, I think I would probably give that a code two on the RCR. If they're not supplying um, equipment outside, I would give it a code three. Um, then also when it comes to circuits that supply luminaires, now th that was a new uh, introduction in the 18th edition. So I would only give that a code three. Um, also when it comes to circuits that supply special locations or pass through special locations, I, if the lack of RCD protection for those circuits, I would give a code three, but if there is no supplementary bonding in place, then I would give it a code two. Um, so that's, that's very important. The other thing to bear in mind is circuits that supply electric showers. Now, circuits that supply electric showers are, have been required to be on RCD since the 16th edition, so for some time now. So if there was a shower circuit that wasn't provided, that wasn't supplied by an RCD, I would give that a code too. Um, also for cables buried in a wall uh, without any earth metallic covering, I would give that a code three. So there's a few different things to bear in mind there and it's important that we, we look at the circuits and see what they're doing and, and, and assess that when we're doing an ERCR. The second thing to bear in mind is overload protection. Now you'll remember when you were at college, you, the, you will have learned how to um, select the correct cable size for an installation. Um, and you'll remember that there is a correction factor of 0.725 when rewirable fuses are used. If you look at the rating of the protective devices on the picture there, um, if you divide say 15 amps by 0.725, that will give you a really good idea as to what effect that has on the size cable that you need to select. Um, so really important to bear in mind. And if the, the cable size is not high enough, then obviously that protective device would not protect against overload. Another thing to bear in mind with these old fuse boxes is that you might find that the old fuses have been replaced by plug-in type circuit breakers like you can see on the image here. So this is an old uh, BS3871 breaker with the push button to, uh, to reset the breaker. Um, and the problem with these is that the rating in KA is about 1 KA for these. So if the prospective fault current for the installation is higher than that, obviously that is a big problem and that's something that you would need to note on your EICR if you found an example like this. And also you can see that the person that's done this has uh, really had a go at the uh, the fuse cover there to uh, to try and get it to fit. Um, I, I would give that a code three for that alone, uh, just just for the way they've cut that out there. So obviously that is another reason why these old boards um, may need to be replaced. The other thing that I would bear in mind when looking at uh, an old fuse board like this is I would look as to the general condition of the, of the fuse board. I would look to see if there's any knockouts missing or anything like that, anything that affects the IP rating. Um, looking at this board, um, uh, you can't see from this picture, but I did have a look around and I could see there weren't any concerns like that. It is unfortunate, however, that when you take the cover off the, the fuse cover, you can see inside and you can see the cables and everything. So that is a concern. Overall, I would say that I would replace this consumer unit. Um, but what I would say is that if you're doing an ERCR, that we need to assess that against the wiring regulations and be specific about the reasons why we need to replace it. So I hope you found this video useful. If so, please give us a like and please subscribe. 